after the disappointing season, here's some numbers for you to just mull over. Lost 11 in the last 15 games, 4 goals in the last 12, 6 points off relegation, 17 points from the playoffs, 9 points from 45 since February, 16th place in the league, 22nd, 22 league losses, have we lost that many? Ridiculous. And only 2 championship teams have lost more than Sunderland. Wow, that is depressing. Let's have a chat about it. Hey, we go back again with another video and today we can have a quick chat on my thoughts of the season that's just finished. But before we do that, LU Soccer is supporting this channel. I'm going to show you now a bit of footage of the shirts and you've got a 10% off any purchase with the code TM10. And we'll leave a link down below in the description. Thank you, LU Soccer, for giving me so many shirts. And there's another few more in the post. I will show you the opening of that next couple of days. Club, country, all over the world. Quality shirts. Quality shirts from LU Soccer. Absolutely amazing. And I have a new summer giveaway for the Euros coming up shortly. But first, I want to say a big thank you to LU Soccer. If you do enjoy this content, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So unless you've been living under a rock, on the moon, you will have known Sunderland have finished way down in the table. 16th place, lost a massive 22 games and only 6 points off relegation. Well, I'm not quite sure who's been on the moon to be fair. I don't particularly believe Buzz Aldrin and uh, the Mr. Armstrong himself actually made it to the moon back in 69. But that's another conversation for another day. Now I forget what I was saying. <laughs> Alright, yeah. So we all know where it started to go wrong, didn't we really? When the transfer windows weren't that good, to be fair. Let's take strikers, for instance. Everyone's sick of harping on about strikers. But yes, we took a risk, took a chance. Could have paid off some, some other time, but didn't this time. With four youngsters, you know, buying in youngsters. And hopefully they'll, they'll improve for later on in the future. We were hoping the likes of Ruchin would have come in, hit the ground running and burst over the unloan lad would have been some sort of star in the making, but clearly he's not at this moment in time and the level that he's at was probably League One stroke bottom end of the championship, but not at the level we want someone like Burstow to be at. <clears throat> so I'm pleased he'll be going back to Chelsea. And of course, we've got Mienda and Semedo who are nowhere near ready for the championship. Absolutely nowhere near. And you know, again, it isn't their fault. They may never be at that standard but we need to do better. We, even if we brought one quality striker in. The striker situation wasn't good and that was the failing from Speakman, of course, and obviously KLD, who will probably instruct Speakman what to do. So getting rid of the experience, again, was something that we, we've, we've tried to do it. We've gone too far one way, it hasn't worked, and this is where we ended up in the 16th place in the championship. Miles away from the playoffs, considering we were knocking on the playoff doors. You know, even when Bale got sacked, we're still kicking about the playoffs if the rot hadn't already set in. Now, Mowbray was the manager, should have been the manager for the full season. You know, regardless what happened with his health, we didn't know that at the time. I wish him all the best, of course, for his future. But we should have kept Mowbray and should have been backed in the transfer window. If he'd got in the experienced players and the quality strikers that he probably wanted to bolster his squad in the January transfer window, I think... We wouldn't be sitting down in 16th place right now. You know that and I know that. Home form has been abysmal. And for a team on last season, free, free, free flowing, entertaining, scoring plenty of goals. It was exciting football last season. It was exciting football at the start of the season, to be fair, you know, in certain games. A bit of Sheffield Wednesday game away. Comfortable victory. You get entertaining football against Blackburn away. We played some good football. Southampton at home is to name another. Fits and spurts, fits and starts. We should have done better. But like, I think the people who are running the club haven't got a Scooby-Doo. They need to change things. In my eyes, we probably need to get rid of all the backroom staff. with well, the majority. I mean, let's say the Dodds shouldn't be anywhere near being head coach at this club. Speakman for me, it's time for him to move on. And it's time for the likes of Dodds, Speakman, except like them as the pair to move on. And KLD, what's ready for KLD? What's he up to? What's he doing? 
we've, we you know, out of all the teams in the championship, we lost 9 million, but we're third or fourth off bottom. So in that respect, we've saved a bit of money on operational costs that way, but to the detriment of the of the squad, of course, and, and of the way the finish, finishing position where we went up 16th. You let me know what you want to be. Do you want to be a team that's mid-table in the championship, but financially sound? Or do you want to do and try and do an Ipswich and go for it, spend some money, and hopefully it pays off. You've got three teams that got promoted last season to the Premier League. Sheffield United, Burnley and Luton. And it looks as if all three teams are coming back down. But like I said on Sky Sports today, they're coming back down. 150 million better off with the parachute payments. Which will help them to get promoted again next season. And if they don't get promoted next season, the parachute payments should help them to stay financially stable. Thank you for your support over the season. Watching the vlogs, watching the videos. Let me know your thoughts. Do you want Dodds and Speakman out? Do you want KLD out? Do you want KLD just to open his eyes? Smell the roses and change the model? Or just change his direction slightly? Improve what's going on at the club? At least try and go for the playoffs without actually just scrimping and scraping and buying bits of kids in all the time. I mean, my opinion is, if Speakman's to stay at the club, all Speakman should do is the job is to go out there, search for young, untapped talent, bring them to the club. But he shouldn't be anywhere near the first team. He shouldn't be anywhere near picking the team anywhere near, you know, deciding what experienced players need to come in. That should be left to somebody else, head coach, manager, you know, directly involved with the owner or instructing Speakman, this is what I want. Go out and get it for me if you want us to get promoted. Head coaches, Oh, that's another story altogether, and I'm not happy about it. Right, if we don't have a head coach in at this club in the next three or four weeks, I'll be absolutely livid, disappointed. I need to bring somebody in right now to sort this team out, structure the, 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 structure the, uh, the balance of the squad, start to bring in his own players once he sees what he has at his disperse. The new head coach comes in, Next two or three weeks, then he has a couple of weeks to see what he has at his disposal, what players are already at the club, and address the balance to get the squad correct for next season. And he should be going instructing Speakman, this is what I need, and KLD, to get this team into the playoffs. Then it's their job to find a way of doing that and bringing those players in. They're going to bring the head coach in. The head coach needs to come in and be able to do his job correctly. Not come in, be dictated, dictated to, be told what players he has at, his has at his disposal. He needs to be able to address the squad. In his opinion, as a head coach and a manager, he should be able to address the squad and bring in the players that he wants to improve the squad. As it's his job to be manager or head coach. Not Speakman's and not the owner. If they don't want to do this correctly then they should sell the club. In my opinion, KLD, if, if, just, if all he wants to do is come in and make money, then for me, he's not the right man for the job. He needs to come in and bring a good head coach. We need a good head coach at this club. And whoever comes in needs to be able to bring his own players in. Yes, of course, we've got a lot of youngsters already in there that needs sort of to be improved, and that's his job as well. But if, if he thinks some of these young players are not good enough up to the job, they need to be released or moved on. It's typical though, we'll probably get a head coach in we've never heard of, on the cheap. I hope that doesn't happen. We want somebody with a bit of experience in there, or even somebody, you know, that has good, good contacts, where he can maybe even, even if he's starting his career, got good contacts, Looks like he's got a bit of something about him who will come in and really improve the position of this club. Really get it moving towards, you know, the top end of the championship. And Speakman's job solely to find young untapped talent, bring it into the club with, of course, the help of the head coach and manager. Now they've got to be able to think they can use this talent and improve this talent. Yeah, so the head coach's job is to improve players. 
Speakman's job is to identify players and communicate with the head coach and decide them together. Decide together, the head coach, manager and Speakman, whether these youngsters are the ones we should be bringing to the club. And it's a joint decision. That should be, that should be Speakman's only job at this club if he stays at this club, in my opinion. I think Sunderland fans generally can, you know, can come to an agreement. It's been a very disappointing season and we do need to improve for next season. If we've got a sound foot and of stability now, that's probably the only thing that's come out of the season for me. We need to release the likes of Dak and probably one or two other players who are not up to the standard if we can find somewhere for them to go. We do wish them all the best, but as a club, we need to now look forward and upwards and try and improve. Like I said, we need a new head coach in, ASAP, as soon as possible. In the next two or three weeks. Don't wait around until July, it's far too late, even June for me. Addressed in the next couple of weeks of May, get a new head coach in and start rebuilding this squad for next season. If we haven't got a head coach in by June, I'd be bitterly disappointed. And again, it will just show for me the lack of... It will just show me the lack of planning at this club. Lack of ambition. I mean, they've had weeks now already to address the situation with the head coach. They should know which two or three they want to interview to bring in. If not, the top candidate already. And get them in the club straight away. Let them rebuild this club where the squad is. But there we go anyway. Let me know your thoughts down below. So there we have it. Let me know your thoughts down below. Disappointing season. We can all agree. Disappointing season. Even the hard-lined, you know, Speakman fanatics, best friends of Speakman can, can say he's had a stinker. He's had an absolute stinker. Absolutely awful from KLD, I think, as well. Everything to do with the Black Cats fiasco to do with the Newcastle situation. It's all awful. Ticketing needs to improve. There's lots of off the pitch needs to improve. Obviously, all that money can be invested in, you know, in, in, in the stadium. But we need heavily to invest in the squad as well. So there we go. Hope you've enjoyed the quick video. Overall opinion, I'm very disappointed. Disappointed the way we finished the, the season. I do blame speaking for the thing. Dodds needs to go now as well. Would you keep Dodds as a coach? Proctor? Would you get rid of the whole lot? And start afresh. For me, new head coach comes in, new manager comes in. He brings his own backroom staff, staff on. And we say goodbye to Proctor and Dodds and Speakman and Co. That's just my opinion. Walk done. Time for a nice drink. To quench the parts. Well, right, San Miguel. Not too bad. Kind of in between, isn't it? When I went to Fat Hippo yesterday. Got a nice burger here. It is here. They had this rotten, strange looking beer I wasn't impressed with at all. Then went to Weatherspoons for a pint and that wasn't very nice. So I don't know whether I'm becoming a lager snob or what. This is much better. It's an in-between one. I kind of like Madri and Peroni. Madri, Peroni, Peroni, Madri, maybe it's in between. And then <sighs> Weatherspoons. Oh, just not nice beer there at all. Lager there at all. And that uh, fat hip or whatever that was, that was just really... <laughs> It's not my cup of tea anyway, because it's lager. But yes, let's have a look at this now. This is off. I've, 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 I've enlarged this off yesterday for Logo 9 being pulled down in the box. How is this not a penalty? Someone let me know there. How is this possible? Logo 9 has been criticised for manhandling players time and time again. Give away a penalty every now and again. Being yellow carded every now and again. But how is this not a penalty? It's... Beyond a beggar's belief, I mean, this could have turned the game slightly in Sunderland's favour. Probably not, because Sheffield Wednesday were the, by far the better side, to be honest. They were the better side once they got over that first 20, 25 minutes of Sunderland's bit of pressure. But yeah, how is this not a penalty? Let's watch it together and you let me know. That's what really pisses me off about the officials. You don't get very much consistency, do you? I don't know how that wasn't seen. You know, uh, anyway, we, we, we're talking about splitting hairs at the time, but that was a blatant pelt. Splitting hairs? No, not splitting hairs. 
you know, that was a blatant penalty, wasn't it? It was a blatant penalty. But we've had other, yeah, in, in the season, you like to think things, you know, go on swings and roundabouts and we get our fair share of the good results, fair share of the, sorry, good decisions as well as bad decisions. Unlike VAR yesterday with that Arsenal game, I mean, Bournemouth scored a legitimate great goal. This allowed for an absolute brush on the goalkeeper. Pathetic VAR that was in the penalty as well from Havertz. Never a penalty in the month of Sundays. Trailing leg, dives. This is what we've got, got, got to have to have to have one day with VAR. Are you a VAR fan or would you just go back to having officials' decisions on the day? I think there's more controversy to do with VAR. I mean, we've had, we do complain about referees in games, but it's part and parcel of the season, isn't it? We complain about this, that and the other during most games, don't we? But we get on with it. We accept the decisions of the referees and we get on with it. In VAR, it opens up a whole new can of worms. But there you go. Let me know your thoughts on the Luke 09 decision. Let me know your thoughts on VAR. And we'll end on this note. You know, as much as we'll complain how bad the season was and disappointing the season was and, how, you know, how things have not gone well and we're down in 16th and all the things on the pitch are... You know, we've got a right to complain. It has been poor. But my thoughts and prayers go out to all the, the loved ones and, and the family and friends that we've lost throughout the whole of the season. Everybody will know somebody who's sadly passed away. And I want to give, you know, a toast to all them, including Jack Shields. You know, rest in peace, everybody. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Until next season. Ah! 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 Ah!